Hey, babe. Yeah, babe. Babe. What's happening, babe? Babe. <laughs> babe. I'm very excited about today. Oh, yeah. Table 34. Table 34, uh-huh. a.k.a. known to me this episode as the Kobe Bryant episode. This was that episode. This was the episode. I knew you didn't remember. And that's it's like permanently in my brain. And the reason why it's permanently put into my brain as the Kobe Bryant episode is because it's my one picture with Kobe and mm-hmm. it's me, Kobe, and Max dressed <laughs> in full Indian garb with the <laughs> headdress on. Oh my gosh. And that's why I'm always like table 34. I'll never be like, oh, I wonder which one. Cause we all just look like our normal characters. No, Max is head to toe. <laughs> looking like he's from the love guru. Gather round. I like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Messing around. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. And it's funny you say that because you guys were filming one particular scene uh-huh. on stage when he walked in. That's right. And uh, so I was I wasn't in that moment. I remember being out by my trailer, walking to my trailer, and in the distance, I see one of the execs and this tall gentleman. Mm-hmm. And f- and I'm not joking. I couldn't make out the face, just shapes, and it might have been 70 yards away. Knew it was Kobe Bryant. Sure. Because I know how he walks. I'm a huge basketball fan. But I was like, it's either Kobe or some someone who walks like Kobe. And he was wearing a full-on like basketball. A co-wannabe. Like a, yeah, he was, I mean, it was, yeah, it could have been a co-wannabe. <laughs> co-wannabe. <laughs> and, he was with Melvin Marr. It was Melvin who brought him. Uh, actually, I don't think it was Melvin. It was Melvin. No, I don't think it was. It was... Um, He's wearing glasses. He had great gray hair. I'm, I'm not forgetting his name, but it wasn't Mel because Melvin is friends with him. But Melvin didn't bring him to the stage. Are you sure? Thousand percent positive. I'm Thousand percent positive. And board. you know how I know? Because Melvin and Jake Kasdan are uh, producing partners and really close. Yeah. Jake Kasdan, when Kobe came in, goes, "What's Kobe doing here?" Because he's a Knicks fan. Oh. <laughs> and he was like, it's, he was happy to see Kobe. Sure. But he was kind of like. We're, we still have a show to shoot. No way. He would have known. If Melvin brought him to the stage, he would have known that he was coming. Melvin would have given him a heads up that I'm about to interrupt your shoot. Maybe then what I'm remembering, I am going to text Melvin, but what I'm remembering is Melvin explained to me then why Kobe was yes. there. Yes, because Kobe and Melvin were close. Got it, got it, got yeah. it. So maybe it's Melvin explained what the drop-in was really about. Right. And then I remember as he got closer and closer, my heart started pounding i was like oh my god there he is <laughs> oh my god third greatest player of all time uh, what's really funny if you say yourself's number one i'm gonna pass out no it's lebron james michael jordan kobe Bryant. okay i thought just for sure you're gonna try to squeak yourself in there <laughs> <laughs> no the i respect. mean i mean lately i played the other day i'm not gonna lie to you i don't have it anymore <laughs> i was playing with some young kids <laughs> You're Young just really kids. in the honesty game right now. Very self-aware. Didn't have it. You know, I know I know my limitations. So I was with I was with someone recently who was asking me about Megan Fox being mm-hmm. on the show. Um, and I was saying how it was really funny because all of a sudden the set got busier. Yeah. When when <laughs> Megan was on set, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, this light bulb looks like it's out. Mm-hmm. And they were just like hanging out. And I said, but that wasn't the person that came to our set that drew the most people that didn't have to be there. Yeah. That person was Kobe. Was Kobe. Right? was Kobe. Yeah, I remember all of a sudden there were so many people, like people mm-hmm. ran. And also like a Megan Fox reaction, but even worse, you could feel mm-hmm. the energy. Nobody approached him. They yeah. all just stood like a like 20 feet away and just looked. Yeah. And they it, just wanted to be in his like orbit. I remember Jake, uh, Jake Johnson asking him, he was, uh, cause they were sitting in Video Village and Jake goes, so what are you, uh, he's like, so what are you doing here? Um, you thinking about getting into mm-hmm. TV production? And Jay, uh, and Kobe, without even making eye contact with Jake, kept looking at the monitor and he goes, I do what I do, man. I do what I do. Get out. <laughs> that was the response? That was the response. Funny enough, Kobe then goes into production. Sure. Yeah, wins a Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stole it all from the set at table 34. Mm-hmm. Have I told you what happened with Kobe and myself? What no. that was about? 
No. So he was, I remember, everybody was just like lurking, mm -hmm. right? Like 20 feet away, just staring at him mm -hmm. or coming up and saying something. Yeah. With like a shaky, nervous voice. And then yeah. like, okay, cool. I guess I have a conversation now. And yeah. then just like belly crawling away. And I didn't really care that much, to be honest with you. I was like, oh, cool, Kobe Bryant. But it didn't like activate some sort of like panic response in yeah, my Yeah, you're body. a Canadian. I'm a Canadian. If Vince Carter showed up, you might have been like, Ooh. yeah, Air Canada. Yeah. Vance. If Kyle Lowry showed up, you'd be like, you, I you was know. Like a bank, like, I was like a, a Grizzlies fan when we had the Big Grizzlies. Country Reeves. That's right. Big Country. Big Country. Big Mike Bibby. Okay. I know. Bibby. Love yeah, Bibby. Yeah. Um, Sharif anyway. Abdul Rahim. Oh, yeah. I'm, I listen, I know all about these guys. Come on. Keep, keep going. Keep going. As you Memphis. were. This is now a basketball podcast. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, <laughs> you did it. Your dream come true. Yeah. Um, so uh, what I remember was it was kind of like that weird energy because everybody just had this like huge expectation or this moment mm -hmm. and they were going to go home and write in their diaries and call their moms or whatever. So he was sitting in a director's chair and like just outside of where like cast holding was mm -hmm. alone. Yeah. No one was talking to him. No one was near him. And there was one chair next to him mm -hmm. and no one was there. Mm -hmm. And I was wearing, as usual, the most uncomfortable shoes on planet earth mm -hmm. and we just finished the, whatever the take was and so i just went and sat in the empty chair not for like oh i'm going to sit next to kobe and talk to him so i sat there and he sat and then he and i started talking and mm -hmm. i like how you don't believe it look at the look on your face let me tell you something if kobe bryant's sitting down you you have a whole trailer i want everybody to My know this shoes hurt so bad yeah trailer is two feet away i'm gonna put you some high heels right now and make you walk around the block you're gonna take the first available seat yeah if, especially if it's next to kobe bryant i know you would i'm talking <laughs> about me and my choices Make no damn sense. okay anyway i whatever. accidentally sat next to kobe you snake i swear <laughs> so i sit there and i'm not talking to him right because mm -hmm. i'm just like oh, like all right like hi hi but then we start chatting and it was during a new setup, but we we talked for like, I want to say like over half an hour mm -hmm. and it's me and you know these kind of chats that I like to have. And I was sort of like, well, oh, where did you grow up? Mm -hmm. And like, did you always want to play basketball? Like, was mm -hmm. this really something that mattered to you like as a child? Like, did you figure mm -hmm. it out early? And it was just so funny. He just fully was like vulnerable mm -hmm. and talked about how um, it was something that like made his dad really happy. I feel like he talked mm -hmm. about that a little bit. And then that was like his relationship with basketball. It was like the connection mm -hmm. to like his dad. Oh, and wow. then we kind of got really deep into that. And then I was talking about my dad mm -hmm. and then connecting as a child with a parent. And then do you really love basketball when you're a kid or you're doing it just because? And anyway, right. we had this really deep chat and it was mm -hmm. really, really lovely. And I was just like, what a like kind, like vulnerable boy. I've asked that same question to other NBA players, like, what made you get into basketball? You know what the response is? The hose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Kobe did not say the hose. Kobe did, Kobe did not say that. He got very vulnerable and talked about his childhood and mm -hmm. really, like, re-examined if that was the love of basketball itself yeah. or really mm -hmm. was it just, like, connection it's With always so appearance. funny. This is how you know that people are gifted when it's not even truly their first love, right. but they but they go on to become iconic for doing it. Me, basketball it will always remain number one in my life mm. over acting, you know, but I can't play but it. But the, well. <laughs> the gift ain't there. I'm like, this sucks, man. Like, Do you understand what my brain just did? You just said, this is how you know people are gifted. And what I thought was coming was you were going to say, the way you got that man to open up and really just share his truth. And I was like, ah, no, we still talk about Kobe Hannah, and basketball. Hannah, I don't I think it was your, I don't have a full circle moment about like you recognizing like a gift I have. I don't think it was your interview skills. I wasn't even trying to interview. I just have that I magic just, about me. Like, People <laughs> trust me. You are a very charismatic, lovely young lady. Thank you so and much. and yeah. what I was looking for. But it had nothing to do with your interview skills. <laughs> You ain't Oprah. But well, you, know no, well, you know what? You can give me another compliment too. You can say that was cute that he said nice things. Yeah, that's okay. That's you why. can also say that. I'll that's take why, that right now. That's why Prince was emailing you and not me. <laughs> <laughs> I also had some vulnerable talks with Prince. Don't. Don't do it. Let me believe my truth. Let me believe my truth. 
It's because I got the chat. And I'm going to hire you as my lawyer, my Thank agent, you. and Thank my you. manager. <laughs> Please go I'll get it I'll take all done. those percentages. All I want is basketball tickets. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want. Um, um, all right. We're going to talk about table 34 when we come back, a.k.a. the Kobe Bryant. Oh, Folks, um, one of the writers for this episode, um, a lovely young man by the name of David Iserson. Yes. David Iserson is not only not only a novelist, but he's also a screenwriter, producer from Freehold, New Jersey. Shout out to New Jersey. I used to live in New Jersey. And one of his first jobs was writing on Saturday Night Live. Pedigree, baby. A comedy institution. Um, now, since then, He's worked on shows like Mr. Robot and Mad Men, written a movie called The Spy Who Dumped Me. Love that movie. And a, a young adult novel yes. uh, named uh, Firecracker. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I read it. You did, did you really? Yes. Oh, my God. People be reading out here. Yeah. Um, but he's here today not only um, uh, because he was a producer on New Girl, but he also wrote Table 34. He wrote this episode that we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Makes him the perfect guest. 100%. We're so smart. Mr. David Iserson. What what? Hi, Hi everybody. Hey, 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 hey. So today we 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 are uncovering uh episode two sixteen, table thirty-four. Mm-hmm. Just right right off the top, what do you remember uh, about this episode? <sighs> okay, so the most memorable thing about this episode, because mm-hmm. I really had not like Looked at it, thought about it mm-hmm. since. I mean, the most memorable thing is that Kobe Bryant was there. Yeah! Yes. Yeah. Well, let me just say something. You remembered it. Do you know who didn't remember that? It's not that I didn't remember. I I wasn't putting it together. I remember as soon as she said it, I was like, "Yes, I remember that." Yeah. Because when he walked in, yeah. he's, you guys were dressed like Max was dressed. Yeah. You know, and uh, something that Max probably would never wear. In, in his yeah. regular life. Like the love guru. <laughs> it was just like the love I mean, guru. I mean, that was the most obvious, the, the, the thing that felt the most Schmidt thing of that episode. Is, <laughs> yes. yeah, and that's how I can definitely place myself in that episode because I have pictures mm-hmm. of Kobe Bryant there. And oh, man. Max how much is of a full heads turban. up did you get that Kobe was coming? We got, I got almost no heads up. And it was, um, so the story as I was told was that he would pass by the Fox lot on his way to practice and he thought, wonder what they do there. And he called someone who called someone who who he had a day off and he was like, I'm going to spend the day on the Fox lot. Wow. And they brought him around. Mm-hmm. And I certainly not the most sportsy person on the writing staff, but I was mm-hmm. the one covering set. Yeah. It was it was. Um, yeah, I think it was the same day that Norman Lear was visiting the writer's room. Oh. That's right. So, I remember that. So, like, I I mean, my um, my geeky fandom is much more for sitcom history. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't hang out. I didn't meet Norman Lear, but I hung, I spent the day sitting mm. next to Kobe, yeah. which I, I understood the significance of. Yes. It just, it just was not exactly where my fan You'd rather have been hanging out with Norman Lear. <laughs> A lot late. So I, yeah, so he was sitting on, he would sit on set, you know, they put him in a director's chair and he was very, he was very interested because we were, he was, Definitely there for like uh, Schmidt's big speech. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had a, a lot of alts, which mm-hmm. I imagine for an observer, seeing a lot of the alternate lines was fun, yeah. not as fun for the actors. But um, mm-hmm. but yeah, so so Kobe was he, he was laughing, he was he was into it. It mm-hmm. was uh it was it was wild. It was a it was a it was a really surreal day. Oh yeah. That's so funny to think that Kobe Bryant heard India, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> he heard it. He yeah. laughed yeah, at right. it. Discussing <laughs> at my whole country. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's so funny. We're here with David Iserson, um, writer of episode uh, 216, table 34. So let's break down the episode. After the kiss. The kiss. The kiss. Nick and Jess, they do their best to avoid each other. But trust me, it is more awkward than uh, a family member asking you for money again. That was a joke that was written in here, but it's so true. (laughs) It's so true to my life. (laughs) Um, Winston declares himself the mojo man after having great sex with Daisy because Winston still got it. Um, That's when Cece attends an Indian marriage convention and the gang all crash. Just like the gang always somehow does. They crash things. Uh-huh. Um, now, quickly, we see Schmidt is clearly in, still in love with Cece, while everything Nick and Jess try to do to prove they aren't a couple backfires. 
Jess eventually tells Sam about the kiss, which leads to, first of all, I don't know why the fuck she did that. Um, but it leads to him <laughs> dumping her, but not before he punches Nick. He hit that man right in the in the solar plexus. And the Sharons. Yeah. Um, now, Schmidt gives a wholesome speech about how great CeCe is in front of the convention, and it leads to them going back to his place and doing the, you know, what adults do. The, the, the turban on. That's right. You know, it was, it was, it was something. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> it was something. Yeah. Um, so there we go. That is indeed uh, the episode. Table 34. So let's dive right in. Um, let's start from the top. Yeah. This is my big question for you is about the moonwalk away. Okay. Where did that come from? I'm trying to, I, I don't recall it being my idea. Mm -hmm. I, but when I was rewatching the episode, I was like, because the original conception, I went back and like I looked, at, mm -hmm. I I wrote a version of this episode, like at that point, I think we would get we the writers would get like seven days to write an episode, and I think Holy I was smokes. on, I was on day six and three mm -hmm. quarters, mm -hmm. and um, I got a call and said. We decided that Nick and Jess were gonna kiss in the episode before. Mm. So what you're working on, we can't we can't use it yeah. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so um so come in and I I came in and so the the version of it, I mean, it was always gonna be the, the Indian marriage convention, but I don't think Nick was there. So I guess there was a there needed to be an idea of just Nick needed to want to avoid want to not want to be around the the loft. Mm -hmm. yeah. How would you get Nick to go to an Indian marriage convention, which would seem more rationally like something Nick would not want to do? Yeah, of right. course. So I I, I I have a vague memory that the moonwalk away was somehow part of establishing that Nick just didn't yeah. want to be there. Right. Yeah, right. He's just trying to avoid her at all costs. Was this the first time we've seen him do the moonwalk? I think so. That was the first moonwalk. I got to imagine, yeah. Because it becomes yeah. a thing. It becomes a thing. But it becomes like this big thing. Right. And people say it to me all the time. It's just yeah. like this funny Nick thing. People do it. Yeah. And I was just like, I wonder where it all Because now it, it, it's, it's so funny. It's a thing now, just in general, people say, I'm, I'm going to moonwalk away yeah. from this conversation. Okay. And I You'll believe it came from this. Mm. It entered the culture of avoidance. Listen, it's, it, it entered the zeitgeist, and I'm sure it came around like at 3 a.m. one night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a creative way to get away from someone. Um, so Jess, uh, she wants to tell Sam, she wants to tell him, uh, I know. and then that honestly, when I rewatched it, what David Walton says mm -hmm. to Zoe about when he rolls over when he's like, I can't look at you, oh, but I can't help it. But mm -hmm. I look back at you. I was like, this is the dream <laughs> of what someone would Very say. Very sweet. He's a, he's a real so sweet, sweet boyfriend. Yeah. Where did that come from? Um, You're like this is what I do every morning. No, yeah, it must. It must be. <laughs> it mu I mean, anything that like was you know good boyfriend behavior, it must have been autobiographical. Um, <laughs> no, there was there was a really long runner, um, really long like lengthy version of lots of things that would happen in the episode, and I remember it was that every day he woke up and all he dreamed about was mountain biking but he um <laughs> and and so that like all in my like old drafts of it it was like he would wake up and he's like i had a dream i was mountain biking like it just there was no nuance to mm -hmm. it or anything like that so i think f there was there was a time when the episode was going to be about just just wondering if he wasn't deep enough which is sort of implied mm -hmm. a little bit and but i think there just kind of needed to be a level of like we need to understand that like there's something that's really you know that she's she's really torn. Mm. Like he he is a sweet guy. It'd be really easy to just kind of start making him an asshole and then make yeah. it kind of easy for her to easy for them to 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 separate. But I think he wanted to make it a little bit you know like mess it, mess it up a little bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was, it was such a smart way, especially as like a female viewer watching it. I was like. Oh my gosh, whatever his issues are, if he's saying that to you every single morning, stick around, lady, so that you feel the loss at the yeah. end. He's a rare find, a rare bird. Well, uh, well, to be fair, oh, I gosh. mean, what? She was wearing makeup, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing, she was definitely wearing 
makeup in a way that I don't think was uh, yeah. mentioned by by it yeah. wasn't necessarily implied. I mean, she didn't. I think she didn't go to sleep, but her eye yeah. makeup was was pretty was pretty on point. Georgie <laughs> did her makeup. Georgie did her makeup, <laughs> and she did look gorgeous. She yes. always looked gorgeous, but she did yeah. extra gorgeous for a mm. morning. Yeah, I got it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not something we talked about this before. But like, I got to be honest. When I roll over, I'm like, I love being here. But you and I both right now are very ugly. <laughs> I was saying he has to work on um, uh, not telling the truth all the time. In real, women. In, in real life? In, in real, real life. life. This is a conversation <laughs> in our friendship that I discuss. Sometimes we don't have to say it out loud. Yeah. You know? I have a hard time just looking you in your eye and lying. <laughs> I have a hard time just feeling like, you're so beautiful right now. <laughs> yeah. like, but then you just don't say anything. But there's mucus in your crevices. Let me get that. Yeah. Let me hold on. Let me get some blush really quick. Hold on. Let me braid that back. Oh, beautiful. If you open your kit and caboodle and just like pop out all your makeup on a woman, I mean, it's getting. <laughs> we're getting. We're getting in the weeds. Look, don't worry about my Friday oh, nights. But, yeah, <laughs> because this is an audio medium. Like Lamorne is not looking at a person. Like it, I think. I think this would. This would be a lot more of a complicated statement. Like if he was looking at one of us when he was doing the bit yeah. of lying to somebody, <laughs> but he is like looking at a pretend person that is like floating in the air above him, and that that is who he is doing this bit to. Yeah. It's like listen. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, those days are over though. I'm I'm, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start lying more. <laughs> the good, yeah, now's the I'm time. To, now's the you. time in life to start. I'm happy for you with this. <laughs> As a forty-something-year-old man, I'm gonna now start to lie. And I think yeah. that's something that people should really be on board with. That, yes. Like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. should be a liar. <laughs> yeah, be Thank a you. bit of a liar. Thank you. Well, this is your this is your <laughs> sister telling you. Okay, okay. So Jess, she tells Cece. Yeah. That Nick kissed her. And your response was, what? I remember doing that. Um, and I just went like, what? What? I did all these different ones. And I don't know if it was you or if it was Tristram or who, who told me. They were like, could you just do one and just keep going? Like, it was very I, Family Guy-esque. They were just like, yeah. don't stop. <laughs> it was such a, I don't rem- yeah, because it was such a good bit. Because because it because the credits ran and then you were still doing it, yes. right? Yeah. It yeah. was really, <laughs> I, I, I'd love to take credit for it. I don't remember, but it was really funny. I don't funny. remember either, because it wasn't my idea. Yeah. I just, because I, and in the moment of doing it, I remember being like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> As a human reaction to your friend. To yeah, yeah, keep yeah. Going and to not like let the person now speak. But it works and yeah. people love that moment yeah. so mm-hmm. much as the incredulous mm-hmm. response to your friend doing something so dumb. Oh, yeah. 100%. I was thinking about that because what happens is even we improvise a lot. And when someone, you can, you can have as many variations as you want, but when someone then gives you that note, like if someone would have given me that, I wouldn't have been able to do it as well. Just because in my mind, I'm like, oh, I, I think I know what they're going for and it will work, but now I'm thinking too much about it. <laughs> and I would have been like, what? And my voice would have cracked. They would have blown up and down. You did it so perfectly. Oh. Um, yeah. It's a rare moment. It's a compliment. I'm just going to try I told you I'm working on so my much. lies. <laughs> I told you. I'm Moving working. on. <laughs> Moving on. Winston declares himself the Mojo Man. Yeah, because she said it. What? What, what did she say? Like it wasn't. She he was pretty good, right? Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Um, I remember again. This goes back to when I was telling you about how I felt about my performances in the first two seasons. Mm. How I'm so critical of myself and how I wasn't. Uh, I'm. I'm happier with season three and on. You know, and at, while I was watching it and doing the Mojo Man dance, I was like, I could do that so much better now. <laughs> Let's run that back. Let's do this episode again. <laughs> Let's do this. There is so many parts of my performance that I was just overanalyzing going, no, I wouldn't do that either. I think I'd make a different choice here. <laughs> I'd make a different choice there. And the, the Mojo Man dance is something that I wish I could do again. Really? In fact, I'm going to do it again and post it on our Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Really? I thought it was great. It made me laugh when I rewatched it. I don't know what it is. I where did that come from? My experience was and I I mean there was a I think there were several different Winston stories and Mm -hmm. um I mean I'll compliment you because I, Mm -hmm. I will say that like I don't know that like we gave you a lot to do in that episode. I I mean I can I can fall on the sword there. Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you made it really funny, but I, I, when I was watching it, I was like, "Ooh, I, f- I feel a little bad <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, I think that like there is, there was, there was kind of um, 
a, an idea there, mm -hmm. and I think you did a great job with it and made it really memorable. Mm -hmm. And I and I there was a because I think there was a whole story at one point where um, like Winston's girlfriend is daring him to do a bunch of things, and he's mm -hmm. and it, it at one point it ended in him getting married to her <laughs> and um and i think there was just like some sort of 11th hour like yeah but then we're gonna have to actually deal with winston yeah, getting, getting married, married off screen <laughs> and i think ultimately we just wanted everybody at the indian marriage convention mm -hmm. and um but i i i thought it was it was it was you did a really funny job and and then it was i think the 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 bit that came from it about the the woman who was running it um being very attracted to you. Also, probably not my best writing I've ever done, but you did a really funny job with it. <laughs> so funny. So Mira Simran plays Anu, that character, and mm. we're like old friends now, but that's where we first met. We ended up like um, doing a movie together. We EP'd a movie together. We're long friends. Um, and she talks about how absolutely wonderful the experience was. And she thought it was so funny and such a funny, interesting character for like an Indian woman to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it was those roles didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And she loved it. And she loved working with you because she got to just say all these super weird things. Yeah. And you were just like there for it. Right. It's kind of weird when you're like, she sent me this um, video. Um, we'll put it up on our Instagram. But she um, she sent me this video where she talked about it. It's kind of strange. You're like walking onto this show. We were like a very well-known and beloved show at that time. And, you know, the cast is all in its groove and your guest cast. And she's got to do some and say some pretty crazy mm -hmm. things yeah. to you. Um, and she just said it was like the greatest experience. She got to be super funny mm -hmm. and weird. And she wasn't, you know, it wasn't like those roles were just like mm -hmm. out there. Um, so she had an awesome time with it. Here's, I don't know how I felt in the moment, like while filming it, but I know how I felt after rewatching it. And I was like, damn, how come Winston didn't go for that? Yeah, I, was, I, was like, <laughs> I was shocked too. I was like, What's I don't the... understand. I was like, what? The... Like there's a vibe clearly. I was like, if I wish I had her pinching my butt and doing stuff yeah. like that. What'd you call them? Blueberries? Those yeah, the blueberries. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa, Winston didn't, uh, he didn't cheat. Yeah. We should have established Winston as a cheater. We should have, yeah. We, we established, now we established Lamorne as a 40 something liar yes. and, and Winston as a cheater. Yeah. Yes. That's true. You stayed faithful. In that. Uh, that was actually quite nice. Which is self choice because even, which is funny because Daisy ends up cheating on Winston later down the yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. And he comes home as a size 15 yeah. shoe. Yeah. And then, oh, um, the other thing that was funny watching it back. Was when she, um, when Mira or the Anu character references the Watchers, and it's mm -hmm. Brett, yes. Dave, Rizzoli, and Purple. Yeah, Bill yep. Purple. Yep. <laughs> yep. Those are like the, the, the creepy the cre Watchers. The, well, I mean, I, I really, Dave really popped as a real creep. <laughs> I, I think, I think, like, I, I had to watch it a few times to like to to catch who everybody was because it was only on for a second. Yeah. I have I was the picture like, right here. I'll, but, I'll show but, you guys. Again. But Dave Finkel really, he his 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 creepy expression, like like really really worked. <laughs> okay. David Rizzoli. David Rizzoli. Because he was. Oh yeah. Happy. Now now that I'm seeing, See? yeah. I mean, Bear Bear actually looks like he would be plucked out by some of the women being like, hello, let's go, let's go in. But yeah, Finkel really committed to the big eyes. Let me see. Well, we'll put this up on our Instagram to uh, this picture. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's um, <laughs> uh, two, you know, men behind the magic and then our two uh, first ADs. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Brazilian um, purple. Oh, yeah. Um, why were they both there? It's really funny. Probably because Kobe was there. <laughs> I think, I, I, I imagine that was probably it, yeah. yeah or was they, like, I'll just jump in. Where there was like a call that went out that like we need creeps and I'm like I guess I'll have to do it. <laughs> um, okay, so flashback. Mm. Just reading a magazine. Man terrorism. Nick Moon walks out of the living room. Yeah, more moonwalking. More moonwalking. Yeah, he does moonwalking right before that as well. Um, That's how he gets out of everything. Yeah, Jess says Nick was a man and grabbed her. It was firm and tender, and she saw through space and time for a minute. Yeah, that's interesting that she would say that about. I saw her. the parallel in that because she gives that great speech where Cece's just like listening, but it reminded me then of the speech that Schmidt gives at the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, or when he's talking to her to the side, where he's talking about their sex, right? It's like it's all the oppression, and I can feel like the ancestral, mm -hmm. like this very, very, very pointed thing. But it reminded me of how they both have are talking about this, like unavoidable, deeper than anything they've ever experienced, 
um, connection between two people that they've experienced, mm. both Jess and Schmidt, which is why they can't stop thinking about it. Mm. No? no? Was that a choice or am I just like? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, it, it, there was lots of conversation. I mean, I, when I, when I came into the show in the second season, there's always like the, 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 and I think it's true in any sitcom, like the will they or won't they conversation. Like, um, you know, because I think we're all, we all look at, look to the past in sitcoms and there's like a whole tradition of like on cheers, mm -hmm. like when Sam and Diane got, get together, does mm -hmm. that hurt the show? And, right. and, and moonlighting and can you ever come back? Like, is there, it, Will it break the show? Yeah, mm. and I, I was definitely in the camp of like, just start pushing them together, and and I think that, um, you know, I think I think that feels, I, I think having them kiss and us at least knowing that that's, mm -hmm. I mean, we, I think anyone who watches the pilot of the show knows that, that we we're rooting for that. Yeah. So yeah, anything that kind of like. I, I, I think there's probably something to explore if they kissed and there wasn't anything there. Right. But I think that like, and and we'll get to it when we talk about like all the things in the in in the convention that like solidify that these two are meant for each other, which I um which wasn't always going to be the case in that episode, and it, I think really works. So yeah, I mean, when they kiss, it's got to had to have been a transformative moment. Yeah. yeah, it was just the way she described that kiss. I feel like so many people can relate. When you have the moment where you're like, well, that's just different and I can't explain the why. Yeah. But that's in that. my brain forever. I've heard that plenty of times. Women write me emails about a, the kiss that we had or shared. So you, so, have, you, have, so you have you. Kiss, a kiss with a woman and then like at a later date, she yeah. just goes to Lamorne yeah. at Yahoo.com and yeah. she's just like, she's like, by the way. Yes. She doesn't have his number. She can't text him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She has to send an email. I don't give, I don't give him my phone number. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I give out a fan email. She's like, you've changed my life with that kiss. You're like, thanks for the email <laughs> to um, my fake assistant. You were, you were mentioning the convention. Um, the tables felt very cast system -y. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I guess. that that's, that's uh feels like the cast system to me too. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, if you were if you were at one of these tables, what number? Because the lower the number, the better you are in society. Well, that's what that rude guy when we do the speed dating thing is like. I don't date below table six. six. Is mm -hmm. implying yes. You yeah. want to be in a higher number. Yeah. Was there was there any like pitching or conversation about the actual number thirty four? It was 14, it was 16. I just was looking through my old, old drafts and yeah, I, mm -hmm. I think, I I don't even think, I think I would have never conceived that there, we would have fit that many tables. And I'm just, sure. you know, there certainly were not yeah. 34 tables like yeah. on the soundstage, but I think that it was, it was more than I imagined there yeah. would be tables. And I don't remember when it got that high. <laughs> Wait, so, so one being great table. One is a great table. Yeah. yeah. One is a great table. Where would you all be? Um, and be honest with yourselves. <laughs> well, what does Anu say? She says the three things that land Cece at table okay, thirty-four. So she says oh, yeah. she says over thirty. She says no um, higher education, no like college mm -hmm. degree. Okay, and um, and sporadic employment. Well, I have sporadic <laughs> employment. I'm over thirty, but I have two higher degrees. Really. Don't look so surprised to me with I that face. I didn't know you went to college like that. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. I have two degrees. But Canadian degrees. You, I will. I'm I will just saying, that's different. Out right now, I swear. <laughs> those, yes. Everyone passes. So I wouldn't be table, I'd be a little higher than 34 based on those. Yeah. Qualifiers. What about you, table 34? Does associate's degree count? No. No, also, that, that, that's... You're a table 34. Okay, because I also didn't get one of those either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like how you're practicing all your lying today. Uh, let's see. I think I would... Well, uh, uh, employment... Sporadic employment. You can... No, no, no. I've... BMO, I've signed a long contract with. So that is... Your bank that's not sporadic. Yes, that's not sporadic. I think the checks how, ain't sporadic, how often but the does, work yes. is. How often does your SAG health insurance lapse? Because I think that that <laughs> is gonna that is gonna determine it. What table would you be? I mean, 
Jess is seven, and I think I, I, I I'll I'll say that I can be seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. There we I'm go. a professional TV writer. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I would, this is the higher end tables over here. Number two. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be at table number two. You would just take a seat. Yeah, I would just sit wherever That's I wanted. That's the issue. And then I I I pull the race card if they made me move. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I see what this shit's about. They pulled the race card with <laughs> Indians. They don't care. Yeah, yeah it was like I can't pull the race card with like dark Indians. That's right. You know what I'm saying? The <laughs> South Indian tables yeah, are just going to be like, what's up? Yeah, I'd be like, okay, you got me. But, yeah. You know. <laughs> um, I have a question. Mm. Was Sam's breakup too harsh? Now, if, if I was dating someone and she told me, oh, this person just kissed me, I don't think I'd be so upset with her at that moment, I would want to question him and go, why would you just randomly put your lips on my woman like that? I would have to question him about that. But he immediately got but out But he had of just that. watched, right, at the convention that there was some undeniable chemistry. Yeah. He could see that there was more to it. Yeah. And then she didn't tell him immediately. And then he's just watching all this awkward tension. Mm -hmm. Then they built the world's strongest tiny table, mm -hmm. which... I don't know if I remember this correctly, but I feel like Jake just grabbed that man and made him jump on the table. <laughs> that is that is true. And the man what? the man kind of fell right yes. before the commercial break. <laughs> and, yes. um, yeah, because it was. I can hear. You know, you can when you know someone really well. I I could t I could tell that Jake in his own body could feel that the guy he grabbed was immediately nervous and not yes. comfortable. And then you just hear Jake, but it's Nick, but goes. Mm -hmm. It's real, man. It's real. Like, yeah. like this is a real moment. We're we're doing this, mm -hmm. so you got to get up here. Yeah. And this man did not want to. And then they fall, and then they cut to commercial. Yeah, he had a look <laughs> on his face, like, "Am I allowed?" Is like, like when I signed the contract Correct. to be an extra today, am I allowed to do this? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was a, a lot of fear, and Jake just being like, "I'm doing this bit. You're doing it with me." And he goes, "This is real." <laughs> and I was like, "This is you as Jake Johnson reassuring this." Nervous man. Jake li likes to improvise danger. We had a moment in an episode where we had to slap each other. Uh, Jake was, I, I want to say he started that bit and his hands are so heavy mm. and he really hits hard mm. as if he doesn't understand that this is TV. You don't I, actually I, have to. I believe it. There's nothing. You, yeah. I, like, <laughs> yeah, he, he, Jake, Jake looks like somebody who's like roughed people up before. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. When I met when I met Jake, um, we were doing improv. Um, uh, right now, we're we're literally across the street from where Jake and I used to do improv. We might be breaking Whoa. the breaking the the magic of like that we just exist <laughs> yeah. in the universe of podcasts. But we were at um, yeah, we were at an improv theater here, and he had some job that involved like working at a poker casino but like he wasn't like he was playing poker but like it was but it was like for the casino and I'm like that's a that's like a that yeah. that's like a job of somebody who is like mob ties or something yes. like that yeah 100 yeah. it's like I had a friend back in the day his family owned a garage and I was like come on yeah come on we know <laughs> what this is we know what this what's is what's going on in the garage buddy it's a, a money laundering going on isn't it yeah. <laughs> the, the irony of that is that I had, there was an episode where I had to kick Jake in the junk, right? And he went like off right before the scene and asked for a cup so he could dish it out, but he was terrified to take it. Well, nobody wants to get kicked in the balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even you can't he, he got that. so scared. He was like, I don't trust her. I yeah. don't trust her. And I was like, I would never. I understand how to do this. He's like, just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, speaking about getting kicked in the balls, where did the Sharons come from? Who's Sharon? I have no <laughs> idea. I was, I was, see, see, that is a joke that I think that I don't even remember. Like, Because I, I don't think I ever watched this episode when it aired. Like, I just, like, watched the cut. Yeah. Or, like, oh. I watched a cut, and I don't think I watched it on TV. And I mean, it, it's called back too. So he he references it later, but like, I don't think that's the version of the joke that I'm familiar that mm -hmm. I that I remember. So I mm -hmm. I was I was am as surprised as you. I have no idea. Oh, I thought you were like, oh, it's gonna be my aunt. Oh no, yeah, my, my aunt Sharon isn't she named? Just wanted she, to name drop her. Yeah. It'd be yeah. a fun little moment for her. We're gonna go to a quick break, but when we come back, Hannah uh, has to let us know if she's discovered something in this episode. We'll be right back. Oh, not <laughs> Oh, 
And we are back. Um, Hannah, mm. uh, where's the bear? Did you find it? Just so you know, this is this the, my obsession. Okay. Um, I've talked to Liz about it too because I'm just like very laser focused on this. There is a big fan theory that there is a bear in every episode. Like like a picture, like the same yeah. bear. Something. A or the, bear. a mention of the word bear or a picture of the bear or like a little stuffed teddy bear. We've had all types of bears, but there's somewhere in there and said or done or seen. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people don't believe it. I believe it. I believe that somehow it just lives in the show. Um, and so in this episode... The bear is seen in the picture that's on the fridge. Now, I know a lot of people have issue with that because often when you can't find the bear, that's the one that we go to because that picture was always oh, on the fridge. It's always there. It's always there. <laughs> it's always there. But if there's other bears that I have missed in this episode, um, oh, please let me know. We we did miss one. It's Brett Bear. <gasps> Brett Bear! Brett Bear in every episode. The Watcher! Brett Bear, one of the, one of the pervs. <laughs> You've never helped me find the bear. This feels like a good moment in our friendship. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. I Appreciate helped you. It. I helped you. Even though that's not what the fans were looking for. But they didn't know. They didn't Most know. people don't know the Watchers include Brett yeah, Bear. One hundred percent. Well, thanks, Brett. Um, also, he's the creator of the show The Bear mm -hmm. on uh, Hulu FX. What are you talking? Brett about Bear right created now? that show. <laughs> Brett Bear created that show. <laughs> named it after himself. <laughs> yeah. Switch the letters around. <laughs> Um, okay, so during this, let's just talk a little bit about the speed dating exercises. Yeah. Right, there's a few. Um, for me, I, we mentioned it before, um, they're all stupid, um, like in real life. Like speed dating? The, speed dating? Yeah. the exercises. Have you ever done speed dating? Like, well, the exercises. I've no, I've never done it. And I, I wonder if it's something that only it only feels like it exists. In television yeah, I, shows. yeah, I know because I'm not sure if you can find love that way for real. Maybe people do because they still do it. Obviously, I have a lot of friends when they moved to LA did speed dating when they got here. This probably just the way like to meet real thing. Oh no, not successfully. Yeah. But they went right, and then I don't know what type of group of people that it pulls. But nobody has mm -hmm. come out that I knew came out with a like. This person was awesome. It was came back with just great stories. It pulls the type of people who were standing at the side of like that Jake would lift and put on the fake t the fake table. This that, is what I'm that, saying. That's 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 the speed dating demographic. The, the one and, that kills me though. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the table building exercise is fine. Yeah. yeah. But you got to have an engineering degree to pull that off. Okay. Pull it off successfully. <laughs> yeah. But the the hula hoop thing. I was like that doesn't that doesn't prove anything. That doesn't prove anything. Right. That, that just proved that David Walton was tall. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> tall. I was like, yeah. look at this. this I, guess you can, I guess you can make an argument that they were a bit incompatible because of how tall, tall he was. Yes. That like when they woke up, they were certainly head to head. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but we during all, sex, they were not. We all yeah. the same height when we lay down. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what I've always said. I don't remember. <laughs> I remember so much about that episode. And for some reason, I don't remember having to do that wiggle. And I think it's because I probably felt so self-conscious. You just yeah. dissociated. That's right. I was just like, yeah. I'm just going to black out. Because it was always, I remember Liz had me do, it was like season five. I had to, I don't know. It was like showing Jess how to dance or something. It was the Jessica Biel episode. And I had to like do this very similar movement. It like reminded me of it. And uh, Liz was just like, it just like it has to look really sexy. And there's nothing worse to hear then like make it look sexy because you automatically your brain just goes like, well, I, can't, I don't know what to do. This is so, I just, I love my arm. Is this an arm? I don't know where the arm goes. And that's um, what people are t tuning in for. Yeah. <laughs> just the, the, the sex. They can't find sexiness elsewhere. That's so right. They're, just, they're turning into their, their half hour sitcoms right. for that. For yeah. the sexy. No, but I don't remember that part at all. I do remember um, um Max giving that speech to the side or that little explanation where he's like, um, you know, I'm a squirrel, you're my nut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's what, again, one of the, it's just like Walton's thing at the top of the episode. One of the sweetest, most undeniable things that if someone said it to you, you would just smile and be like, oh man, this man's got it bad. It was really sweet. Do you remember where that? I mean, I remember that, I mean, broadly, the writers liked writing for Schmidt because we could mm -hmm. put the weirdest, <laughs> like, jokiest 
TV writer things in his mouth and mm-hmm. and he would have to do it. And I, I I mean, I remember doing a whole row of different things that he would say. Mm. I remember Kobe Bryant behind me when it was happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about, yeah, it was such a sweet, sweet moment. He did it with that cheeky smile and people love that line too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, little quotable romantic moment. I remember Winston passing off uh, this other guy yeah. The stranger yes. <laughs> to Anu. Yeah. Um, and again, while watching it, I was going, what? I was going, what? I was going, I was going, I, I was, I couldn't remember. It's like, does she agree to this? Is yes. that, she's did, like, you'll do. Did we establish that the thing that was most appealing about Winston was his height yes. <laughs> <laughs> and his pants size? Yes. I don't know. Because in every other way, this man and you were. Completely different. Completely different. Yeah. I have the vaguest memory of like having to go through a few different options (laughs) to try to think of the one that was most... Most of them were in size. Like I don't, I don't remember if that was ever yeah. in the original. I think it was like a some eleventh hour thing, and we were probably looking around at the different extras and seeing who could, mm-hmm. yeah. could who could do the best. Yeah. yeah. And then Schmidt uh, picks up the mic and gives this passionate uh, sure. speech yeah. uh, about how dumb everyone was um, for placing you at a specific table or yeah, which you then fully way. backfires. 100%. He thought it would just make me go like, or Cece go like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. how beautiful. But it made everybody else go wow. Yeah, so then he starts to insult parts of my body yes. and reveal it to the room, <laughs> which was also very funny. What do you say? One areola looks like a, 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 tick, a, bite? a tick bite? It's right. and... like, it's very disorienting, <laughs> which then tells the room that he's seen them. Yep. So funny. Mm-hmm. Well, that he's seen them and that like, and that it is a bit of a spectacle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, and you might not want to see them, but you need to see them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that too. Now, now I'm, now I'm putting together that, um, Kobe Bryant heard that speech mm-hmm. about that part of my body, which just now mm-hmm. and thought about it. Yeah. Went yeah. Home, he went, kind of like, chuckled yeah. about it. This is based in truth. Did when they he, get it out of her? When bio? he made his Oscar-winning animated yes. movie, <laughs> and he was just like pitching mm-hmm. ideas that might have at least just like come out, like mm-hmm. just like in the, in the a tick bite in yeah, it. No bad Trust ideas. Me. Yeah, no bad ideas. Um, did we? Okay, did we already talk about? So okay, so we we mentioned we mentioned um, the punch. Um, yeah, him punching him in the, in the stomach and then blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. So that had that ended. They then get back to the loft. Well, before the punch, I will say. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll say, I have something about something to say about speech and something to say about the punch. Something mm-hmm. to say about the punch is that like Nick was supposed to kiss Jess then too. He was supposed mm-hmm. to say, "This is how much it means nothing." Mm-hmm. They were supposed to kiss again. <laughs> and that it was also not going to be nothing. Yeah. And that was going to also lead yeah. to the... Pu- I mean, if you think that the breakup was harsh, I believe that that was a piece of it. And I maybe Wait, there I- was a conversation about, Let's like, see. we would be playing that beat too many times. But did mm. you guys didn't shoot it, though, right? It never got I don't, shot? I don't think I got shot, no. Was it in the table read? I think it was in the table read. Okay, because I remember that. Now that you say that, I remember that. I, I don't know why I remember it, but maybe mm-hmm. I remember it from the table read. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so it would make sense why that. his. Uh, I guess it would make sense, it's, especially if he explained. Oh, we it, it meant nothing because we tried it again and it meant nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I could explain him getting so upset yeah. and the punch in the stomach. Yeah. Um. So they get home and she is. Oh, wait, there was something else. Oh yeah, yeah. Something about the speech. So, um. So Schmidt is uh, talking about what is what is particularly great to him about India. Mm-hmm. Um. He says. Calpen, obviously a genius. Yeah, genius. Calpen, my buddy from high school, yeah. <laughs> um, who I lived with when I moved to LA. Really? I think in the performance in Max's way, I think it sounds a lot more sarcastic than it was intended. Yes. <laughs> and years later, I remember like somebody saying like, I know Cal Penn was on this morning radio show and they asked him about mm-hmm. about about why they and like he and, and he knew what wasn't meant as an insult, but yeah. like the radio DJs were like, were they insulting you on New Girl? <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's so funny. When I re like when I rewatched it and he says that line about Cal Penn, I I thought it was because he's I feel like Schmidt truly does love everything about I, India because he think loves so. Cece so yeah. much. It's like whatever you are. And anybody that's like of you, I love it. But then I was like, and then Cal Penn came on our show yeah. years later. And then when they go back mm-hmm. to the loft and they talk about Taylor Swift, she comes on the show. It was a real manifesting yeah, episode. So, so my question is, mm. um, what does Taylor Swift 
look like in the new girl world? Because mm -hmm. if she was on the show and nobody said, oh, uh -huh. my God, that's Taylor Swift, does in Jess's, in, in the reality of New Girl, does Taylor Swift have a different face? Yeah. <laughs> or she's just like, oh, so there's just a bunch of women who kind of look the same. That could be it too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess I never, so, I, Elaine. Was, I, 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 I'm so upset that I wasn't there that day when she was there on the show. Yeah. It, they kept us, they kept us gross writers away. We were all there, but they were like, you guys can't come oh down. <laughs> so, they learned from so Kobe. Annoyed. Yeah, they learned from they Kobe. Like, you get weird. Everybody's getting weird. Yeah. Is that a real thing? I I know nowadays people say, oh, I'll just put on some Taylor Swift. She is large. And, she's the biggest artist on, on planet Earth. Yeah. Yeah. But back that, then, was she that big? It's it, it was it made me feel very prescient. But I think it was like I yeah. think that was particularly in the way that she was saying it. Like, this is breakup music. OK. Um, no, I, I think I think that that was really as Taylor Swift like ascended into yeah. culture as something somebody like Jess would listen to when her heart was broken. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I admittedly don't put on Taylor Swift when my heart is broken. Mm -hmm. What I, do you put on? Lil Wayne. <laughs> that checks out. That checks out. Lil Wayne. <laughs> Little, <laughs> we we um, shared a trailer, Lamorne and I. We had a shared wall. And over the years, there was a lot of Lil Wayne. So Wayne. that checks out. Referenced in this episode, right? <laughs> heart, heart was constantly breaking. Um, so... Uh, towards the end, Nick apologizes for, for the kiss, says it won't happen again. Obviously, we know. And he does that weird dance, and there's nothing more that I love than watching Jake Johnson having to dance in an episode because I know how much he hates it. Yeah. And it's so funny and so good every single time. And you guys <laughs> made him do it so many times over oh, the series. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's one of the first ones, though, right, where he does something super weird dancey. Am hmm. I wrong? No, I think there might have been one prior to that. You know what I know was prior to that? Yeah. That fucking New Girl music video that we did. Oh, that's a whole other, that's yeah. a whole oh. episode on its own. The yeah. interactive music video. Oh. Do you remember um, that? No, I think I, I, think I <laughs> yeah, blocked that, that one. Blocked yeah. that one out. Yeah, I, think that was I tried to do that too. That was a wild one. Then at the very, very end. Yes. Oh gosh. Honestly, this tag of this episode, I mm. had fully forgotten about. Really? Just like I think, like the hula hoop wiggle. I think sure. I'd fully forgotten about it. Um, and re-watching it, it's very weird to watch yourself. Like, Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Make out with somebody on TV. And we really go for it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, that's the whole thing. Is like, we are just, forget it, we're mm -hmm. back. Um, and I feel like that was a, was it in the was it in the script? Turban turban on, on or turban off? Oh yes, yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. in the script. Yeah. That was in the script. Maybe because I just remember it was, was almost definitely Liz. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember shooting it, and I I feel like we shot, um, or I was trying to get it to be like turban off. I was like, I don't know, is this gonna? I was always so worried about like it was gonna offend anybody because I didn't know like how it was going to be received <laughs> to be like dressed like a little Indian man and then it this certainly do was it my me. feeling watching the episode yeah. was like <laughs> boy <laughs> because um yeah we, we, didn't, we didn't talk as much about the conception of the episode but that was definitely not so when I got hired on New Girl um I came in with a, a story idea um and we which was the story that ended up being um, Nick's father's funeral because mm. a similar thing had happened to me with my um, at my uh, ex girlfriend's funeral, and then Love Rocky, the mm -hmm. who is a um, South Asian um, American writer, um, pitched the Indian Marriage Convention, mm -hmm. not a thing that I pitched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just when they when the episodes were signed out, we each kind of got we we uh, mm -hmm. we Freaky Friday to our scripts. Yeah. So yeah, I so um this um so I was really flying by. I was you know I remember asking Love like what research like what is this? But yeah. I was I was trying to be very cautious about the <laughs> things that I personally wrote down in the script. Yeah. Turbin was not one of them. And um, <laughs> and, a bitch. and, and uh, a bitch. so watching it, I was like, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> will I have to stand behind this fully? But I think everything coming out of Schmidt's mouth does kind of go through the filter of we 
it is coming out of his mouth. Well, there's it's a lot of from his mouth, and he's also so in love. Yeah. You just so believe he's so in love with Cece mm-hmm. and everything about her. It it somehow doesn't read in any way ever offensive. Well, that's what I was going to say. He says a lot of offensive things, but yeah. it's so endearing in a way yeah. that I can't rank it high on episodes of levels of offensiveness from yeah. Schmidt. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is still, this is still like fairly in the, in the benign area yeah. of, of how much it probably gets. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, we're going to go to break and when we come back more stuff uh, uh, about the show. Oh, not mm. And we are back. Um, I have a few questions for you. Please. Um, a few <laughs> questions. Um, do, well, actually, I'll take that one back. Which character did you find it easiest to write for and why? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it was probably easiest to write Schmidt because I think, mm-hmm. as I was saying before, you can basically just write him like a writer's, like a sitcom mm-hmm. writer's room. Though I felt... I did always feel like a kinship writing Nick. Nick, Nick felt mm-hmm. pretty um, fun for me to yeah. write to. Okay. Um, in the New Girl universe, which character would most likely be your friend in high school? Oh. Well, I went to college with Zoe, so I think that 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 did you really like we passed for at Northwestern. We weren't we didn't know each other, but we oh, were wow. there at the same time. So I I would assume that would it would be Jess for that reason. Uh, yeah, and How Damon strange. and Zoe went to the same high school as well. They went to the same high school. I went to college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're college, but they went yeah. to the same high school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Well, fun. It's so funny how small the world can feel when you start to. Okay, so you started in season two. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your first impression of the show? Like overall, before you got the job, oh, when yeah. you got the job, um, you know, first episode you worked so on. I went to the table read that you must have been at, Hannah, mm-hmm. and, um, that Jason Manzukis was reading for Coach. Do you remember oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And um, and so, yeah, so we were just, we were in this weird little office mm-hmm. and, and I knew... Uh, Brett and Dave, like we'd worked on this show, United States of Tara. So I, mm-hmm. so they invited me to this this table read, and I thought it was really funny. And then, and then, um, you know, we we talked it through. Mm-hmm. You know, I gave a few notes. Other people gave a few notes, and then sort of left the table read. And then, like the Dave and Brett and Liz were all huddled, huddled together, and they're like. I think we're going to throw this episode out and write a new one. I think at wow. some point they did write a new pilot, but mm-hmm. eventually they went back to this mm-hmm. pilot. And uh, I thought it was funny. It was it was a really charming show. I liked it a lot. Oh, nice. You said you started season two. I started season two, but I think I, I met I, I I went as like a yeah as a as a as a favor to the table read to give some some notes. Right. And I met on the show in season one, and I don't remember didn't work out or I, I got another job or something like that and then I came in season two. So the but the show at that point was like minted. The show was a the show was a hit. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a good feeling then. Yeah. And yeah. feeling walking into a hit show. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny because I remember when shooting the pilot, I'd never shot a pilot before and I didn't really know. Um and it just kind of felt like, well, that was fun and it's probably going to go away. But like, it, like everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, I guess, to meet on the show. It's in its second season. And then, mm-hmm. and you know, this is probably going to stick around. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can, like, you know, you can, you don't have to, you can pay for a car. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. there's not a lot of job security <laughs> yeah. in this town. So no. that's cool. It has got five cars. Babe? Yeah, babe. Um, here's the topic. Mm. Speed dating. Yeah. Ever do it? No. <gasps> mm. No. Never? No, but I always wanted to. Yeah. It seems like it'd be fun, and it matches my attention span. So just really quick. Because I think you know real yeah, quick. Kind of. If you're like, of. like, ooh, what's going on here? I, I did. A, I mean, when I was, you know. Uh, my young and wilder days, I did some version of speed dating. What I mean, does that mean? Well, I would I would go on multiple dates in a day with different women. Okay. So like on a weekend, like on a Friday, Saturday, you know, we were filming all the time. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Friday night, you get off work late. So I got, there's only one. You can do one date. Yeah. S- Saturday, you mess around and do three. 
Yeah. You got a breakfast date, you got a lunch date, and you got a dinner date. So well, you've never that, speed dated, is what n- you're saying? Never speed dated. Okay, good. Thanks yeah. <laughs> so much for sharing that story. Okay, okay. Uh, next topic. Okay. Next topic. Uh, <laughs> craziest breakup story. Craziest? Br- I feel like you're going to have some good ones. I have quite the- You have a collection. Sto- I have a collection. I have quite the collection. <laughs> Uh, so there was this one time where I was breaking up with someone and it was a very, it was, it was, let's just say it was obvious why I I was breaking up with her. Okay. And she knew it. She couldn't fight it. It was very clear. I'm not going to say what happened, Okay. but she knew. I then, and I lived in an apartment in Hancock Park at the time, right? A lot of- Oh, I know that apartment. Yeah. Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Nothing but old people and then me. So it was a really peaceful place. It was a very odd spot. I remember yeah. coming over once and I was just like, okay. I listen, I love peace and quiet. And when I when I uh she showed up at like midnight ringing my doorbell. How she got into the security gate, I don't know. Uh-huh. But she's at my door ringing the doorbell and I'm like, what the hell's going on? It's like midnight, I look outside. It's her. Now this is a work night. Uh you know, we got 6 a.m. call times. Mhm. So it's midnight. She's ringing the doorbell. I'm like, you got to go. She's like, but I love you. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, we were we were dating for a month. Mm-hmm. I love you. And I and I, and I don't want to go. And I, I just, please, can I come in? I was like, no. I was like, I'm sorry. I got to work tomorrow. She leaves. 3.30 in the morning. There's banging on my door. I'm not answering it. There's banging, 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 banging. I go, it's her. She's now panicked. She looks at me and she goes, someone's chasing me. Can you please let me in? And I was like, okay. ain't nobody out here. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you got to go. Now across the hall is an older couple. They now have their door open watching. Sure. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I do. I don't know how she got in here twice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she lets me know. Like she just didn't leave the first time. She just <gasps> sat downstairs for hours and then came back up. Yeah. And then she eventually left after security came. But... Wow. Yeah. So that was kind of crazy. Yeah. That's that intense. Nuts. I think she was high, to be honest with you. I remember this story. Yeah. You told me yeah. this story at the time mm-hmm. because you were genuinely freaked out. Yeah. I was like, like, she can find her way into the building. Yes. She's living in the stairwell. Yeah. I was and so I'm just I'm saying it's it's done. It's yeah. over. It, this is a full bye bye. Two security gates. How? Yeah. How? You got to go. Yeah. Well, because she was living in the stairwell. It's quite possible. I know some people who live in stairwells. They're called squatters. Yeah. Yeah. You can't kick them out. Yeah. Yeah, they, that's what was happening. They just there. That's a pretty crazy breakup story. You got any? You got any breakup story? I don't have any like super crazy ones to be honest with mm-hmm. you. Yours are all healthy. They're, well, no, I don't. They were healthy. They're just kind of like boring. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have any crazy ones. No, I wish I did. I mean, I wish my life was more exciting that way. What about when you broke up with Kanye? Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't take it well. No. <laughs> He struggled. We all saw the struggle. <laughs> then Kim cut bangs and the rest mm-hmm. is history. He oh, had to true. do that's what he true. had to do. As Kobe would say. <laughs> I do what I do. I do what I do. Okay. So next topic. Um, any awkward morning after stories? You already know the answer to this. And the answer is no. Everything's healthy. The next morning, the... you make each other breakfast. You guys hold yeah. hands and you walk on the beach. There's always a beach. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you and I really are. Do you remember that movie Unbreakable with Bruce Willis and Samuel Sam Jackson? Jackson? Yep. M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. That's the dynamic of our friendship. <laughs> we, You exist so I can exist and I exist so you can exist because we, we live polar opposite lives. But if one of us were to disappear, the universe would be in an imbalance. That's I have true. no I have no awkward morning after stories. Oh, jeez. Everybody was happy to be there, you know. Huh. I got I got quite a few. <laughs> this, I know. The, I know. The most. This is like a theme. This isn't like a particular moment, but this has happened numerous times, where you know you're having fun. You know you intentionally went on a date with someone, but you got a little. You've been drinking a lot, mm-hmm. so you go to sleep and you wake up the next morning, and some you 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 can sense someone is lying down next to you. Your brain is not telling you who that person is, and there is a fear. <laughs> What did we do last night? Uh-huh. <laughs> and you roll over and you're relieved. You're like, oh yeah, I remember going on a date with her. I remember, but then you don't know 
if anything happened or not. And like when you draw this blank in your brain, you go, oh, I gotta, I can't do that. I can't, I can't drink so much. I gotta know. Cause sometimes if I'm like, if I'm, if I'm on a date with someone and I'm nervous about them, I'll drink probably a little bit more than I should. Sure. Because I'm like trying to loosen up and be casual and cool and not be so uptight. Uh huh. And then the next day you have like a headache and you're like, geez. And you look over and you go, I don't remember this woman. If somebody rolled over and went, and then went, oh, it's you. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> Okay. Well, <laughs> bye forever. It's like, no, it's not bye forever. That's, a, that's just a natural reaction. Oh, it's you. Oh, yeah. Surprise. Yeah, it's a natural reaction. I think people try to fake, fake it. You lean over and go, oh, you're so beautiful in the morning. You know damn well she ain't. <laughs> you know damn well she ain't. This truth telling is, is causing you a lot of it. You gotta learn to lie like a real man. I, do, I wish. I wish I knew how. I wish I knew you. how. I, I do not know how to lie. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for listening. Please make sure you follow us on IG, The Mess Around Pod. Uh, that is The Mess Around Pod. Um, and we'll be back next week with uh, episode 217, Parking Spot. Mm. Parking Spot, yes. That was The Mess Around. This has been an iHeartMedia production. Our executive producer is Joel Monique. Our engineer and editor is Mia Taylor. Additional production from Daniel Goodman, Wendy Heisler, and Kyle Chevron. Our theme song was written and composed by Ronald Jukebox Jackson. So we're going to catch you next time. Bye. Bye.